Hey there, it's Prakash again. I am one of the co-founders and the co-CEO of Xano. In today's Connect series, we are going to be connecting Xano to DraftBit. And for those of you that don't know DraftBit, awesome no-code front-end builder uh, specifically for mobile applications. You can build a mobile application and publish it to the App Store. And um, DraftBit's like actually more for the pro coder. People like people graduate from Airtable to Xano. A lot of people graduate into DraftBit when they want to build without limits. And another cool thing about DraftBit is they also let you export um, the code in React Native, which is what it's built in. So very cool. Let's go ahead and show you how to connect. So we'll start in Xano right now, and I'll show you right now that I have basically two database tables. I have a users table with just myself as a user, and then a products table with two products. And then to uh, basically query on the database, I have all of these API endpoints that were created by Xano. Uh, endpoints to sign up and log in the user and to query the database of products and users. So let's go ahead and link this up. So in DraftBit, I'll go ahead and start with an example application. I'll just say example app. I'm going to click create, start uh, from scratch. So then once it's done creating, I'm going to go ahead and connect over the API endpoints. So I want to click this button over here, API and cloud services. So I click that button, no services connected. There's a Xano button right here. I'll go ahead and click Xano. And then I'll just call this the Xano API. Now it's gonna ask for the base URL. If I go to Xano and my API, I can see that this is the base URL here. So I can copy this. And the way that this works is, I'll just open a new browser tab. If I paste that, that's the base URL. And anytime I want an endpoint like products, for example, like if I copied that, you'll see that it's just appending slash products to the base URL. So this is just uh, asking for the base URL. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it here and I'll click save. Okay, now that I have the base URL, we need now the individual resources or endpoints. So I'll go ahead and click add endpoint. And uh, the first one I wanna do is just get products, right? So uh, this is get products. If I run it, it's just gonna return those two products in the database table. So I'll, um, I'll go back here. Uh, the method is get, right? It's a get method over here. I don't need to mess with these two uh, options. I'll go to path and parameters, and the path is slash products. And the reason I know that, you can see it's slash products off of this base URL over here. So now that that's done, no headers to do, just test it. When I test it, I can see there are the two items coming back. So this is all ready to go. So I just realized that, that I forgot to name this. So I'm gonna go back in here and I'm just gonna call this get products. All right, so now that this is named, um, I'll go ahead and test it again and now I'll save it. Okay, get products. Now I'm gonna add a endpoint to get a single product, right? So rather than a list, just one of them. I'll click add uh, endpoint. I'll call this get single item or get single product. It's also a get. On the path and parameters, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go over here, and I, we have an endpoint called um, get products by the ID, right? So you can see it's slash products, slash products underscore ID. So I'll do that over here, slash uh, products, slash products underscore ID. Now you can see over here, to create a variable for data, use the curly braces, variable format. So that just means, that I need to do this. And now I have the variable. It's asking me for a test value. So here what I wanna do is, remember in Xano, if I go over here, I have two products. Product one and product two. Two is number sh is shoes, so I'll go ahead and do that. Two for shoes, nothing in the headers. I'm gonna click test and I should get shoes back. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna save this endpoint. So now that I've gotten the product, uh, I've gotten a single product, um, let's do one where we actually just add a product, okay? So that one is just this post. If I go to the API, there's one that is post products. So here I can see it's asking for a name and a description. If I wanted to add this, remember it's slash products, but it's a post. So I'm going to add an endpoint. I'm gonna say new product. I'm gonna go here, I'll click post. Um, I, I could I could leave it as create, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of it for right now. In the path and parameters here, remember it says um, post products, so that's all I need to do. Products over here, and then here in the body, it's going to ask for the structure, the key values that uh, Xano requires in order to create a product. 
So uh, if I click in post product here, I'll go to run and debug and you can see that there's a name and a description. Here are the inputs. So I click this, I'm just gonna replace it over here and then it's pretty straightforward. In the name, I'm gonna use the same variable. Um, so I'll do those two quotations, they make it easy for me. I'll do the name and then the same thing over here and I'll do uh, description. Okay, great. So it always asks for a test value. I'm gonna say, um, let's call this watch, and I'm gonna call this Apple Watch. Okay, so uh, that, that's the test value, and then I can, no headers, I'm gonna go into test, and I'll test it, but I just wanna show you back in the database. If I go to products, right, we don't have a record number three, but when I test this, right, and I go back to the database, you can see that it's added, right? So clearly it added it, it's all connected, it's ready to go. All right, so let's do two more. We're gonna do the ability for a user to log in to DraftBit, and then also uh, the ability to access a authenticated endpoint. So let's do login first. I'm gonna click add an endpoint, and I'll just call this user login. Login, all right? Uh, here in the method, I'm gonna click post, I don't need this for right now. For the path and parameters, let's see what my login endpoint is. It's slash auth slash login, slash auth slash login. All right, in the body, let's see what it's asking for. Probably a, an email and password. Yep, so remember, run and debug, copy this, go back, paste it here. And then here I take out the quotes and I can just say email. And I'm using, I'm basically naming this the same thing as the key over here, email, and then you guessed it, password. All right, so I have one user, and this has to be a real uh, user that you log into in order for DraftBit to initialize. So I'll say prakash at email.com, and then my password is test, or sorry, password one, two, three. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm gonna go to test. Now the way login works is once I log in, Right, I'll, I'll do it over here to show you an example. So prakash at email.com, I think it was password one, two, three. Once I log in, it's supposed to pass me an authentication token. And for those of you that don't know, like 80 to 90% of logins on the internet use, use JWE tokens. When someone authenticates, it's them, they get passed back a token and that token is used on authenticated endpoints to say like, hey, this is Prakash and Prakash is trying to access this. So this is the authentication token that we'll get back uh, or something like it. A new one gets generated each time. So in DraftBit, when I run this, I should get a brand new auth token. So I'll hit test and then there we go. We have that auth token. And I'll, I can actually just copy this auth token here because what we'll do is we will use it for an authenticated endpoint that we're about to set up. Um, so I'll go ahead and click save. Now I have uh, login. Now imagine if on our products, uh, you know, get uh, products request, we locked it down, right? So here I can toggle authentication. So if I try to access this again, it's actually gonna say it's unauthorized. So we actually already uh, have a get products over here. If I went to test right over here, it's gonna say 401 unauthorized. So how do I convert this get products into one that works with authentication? Well, whenever we do authentication, that happens all in the headers, right? Because we have to pass that token, it's called a bear token, we have to pass that token from the user that's been logged in and authenticated saying, hey, it's Prakash or whoever's logging in. So there's default headers that are here. I'm gonna add a new one, okay? And this one is gonna be called authorization authorization and then here i'm going to say bearer right that's the type of token and i'm just going to paste in that token that i got and i'll set that custom value and that basically uh logs me in as that user we just need a test value to actually work with it so if i go to test and i've if i've done this right remember before i tried it without that bearer token it said unauthorized but it should now bring me back the uh, three results because I have that authorization. So basically in DraftBit, what you would do is you would replace that bear token uh, when you're building your app with whatever users, uh, whatever auth token the user is being, uh, is passing when they sign in. So anyways, what we've been able to do is we've been able to in DraftBit, get products, get authenticated products, 
log in, get a single item, and create a new product. Hopefully, this gives you a good sense of how to connect Xano to DraftBit. And uh, they have pr plenty of great documentations. And even we've done collaborations on YouTube showing you how to list the data in the app itself. So good luck, happy building, and we'll see you in the next video.